right, well, let's maybe wrap up with with one more guy. We've been we've been talking, and we could, maybe you could throw Deuce Vaughn in here a little bit, but I definitely want to wrap up with A Chain. He seems to be pretty divisive. Yeah. Um, he's a he's a bigger guy, kind of like Deuce or a smaller guy, and kind of like Deuce Vaughn. You know, shows ability to be between the tackles and play the running back position, but we have a weird. Uh, outlier situation of just height weight you know the speed and athleticism is awesome um but what are you what are your thoughts on a guy like a chain and, and how are you kind of uh moving forward with him sure it's a great question I, I, for me he's he's raheem moster man um high end track pedigree i mean he's a, a sub 10 200 meter runner um this is a guy that's going to walk into the nfl and and defense is going to need to know where he is at all times right those guys are super important Right. You want to have to game plan for as many players as you possibly can if you're the offense. You want the defense to game plan for those, I should say. He brings that to the table. Right. And as an interior rusher, similar to Raheem Mostert, smart, good instincts, good power, more so the want to. That's it's we think, okay, power, power, power. It's no, I, I want to run through a guy's face mask. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you want that to be a part of their skill set from a mental standpoint? That's he, he brings that to the table mentally and emotionally. He, he wants to do that. You see that in his game. He's not afraid to, which is important as a guy who's a smaller statured back, right? We saw it. Uh, God, if Philip Lindsay's rookie year mm -hmm. was that's why he was so good. He was, he was feisty as hell. Yeah, he, he'd, he'd try to run through linebackers and bring it all four quarters. That's why he was such a productive rookie, was he was able to do that even as a UDFA. Mm -hmm. But I think we're looking at a similar guy in terms of, you know, Raheem Mostert, Philip Lindsay type player where it's you just want to get them the ball because they bring a good attitude and element to your offense. And with a guy like a chain, you have the really, really big playability. You have the the one play touchdown ability. Right. Same with Raheem Mostert. It's, you know, it, it's 75 yards. OK easy you know that's something he brings to the table immediately in the nfl and i think that's where nfl teams i think he's gonna get drafted i think he's didn't get drafted before a chain before tucker sorry before tucker and evans a chain will be drafted before those two um bigsby as well potentially so you, i think you think all three of those guys will be ahead of in the draft I think he could be i think tucker's a bigger question mark but i think definitely right now evans and Evans and Bigsby, I think, are going to be drafted behind a guy like A Chain. I think the NFL is going to love him. Absolutely. Same with Spears. Think, yeah. Spears. Same with Spears. I think Spears is going to be drafted. If, if I was a betting man today, I'd say Spears could be the freaking fourth back off the board. I mean, you, it wouldn't surprise me. Do you worry about a, a, a role big enough for A Chain in a fantasy perspective? Um, as far as because of the height, weight kind of outlier deal? Or is it, does it you just you know, drafting. Ooh. I don't know. I mean, just it's, saying, it's, Hey, I love, I love a lot about him. So I'm, I'm just taking him <laughs> in fantasy. It's tough. Cause like, I don't like, I don't foresee him having as uber large role. Right. right. But I think the threat of him is going to be more important than his actual play. Does that make sense? Yes. 100%. Like, it, it's kind of like how I felt about, um, who was it? Like, the Henry Ruggs and Jamison Williams coming up, very similar sentiments. The threat of this player is probably more important than the player themselves, mm -hmm. which is fine. You have to know where they are at all times because they right. can score a touchdown any single touch. If they're on the field, they have a level of importance that supersedes their actual ability. That's important. Yeah. Some of those guys have that. Some of those guys don't. Evans, Bigsby, no, more plug and play guys, right? These are, you know, they don't offer, in my opinion, a high enough end skill set for defensive corners to be like, oh shit, this guy's on the field right now. Right. Right. We have to do this and this, try to stop him. Um, but that's what A chain brings to the table. So I think that's a super, super important trait. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, do you think he kind of gets, you know, obviously it took a little while for Pollard to, to get, and that could have been just a, because of where he was, but even a guy like Gainwell, um, you know, they're, they're, they were, they were always really good players, but they were super frustrating for fantasy because you just never, you, you put him in the lineup, you know, because he had a good game the week before and he wasn't in, and then he does nothing. And then you take him out of the lineup and then he's, he's back in, you know, making big plays and taking 70 yard uh, touchdown play. So is it, you know, obviously those guys are built a little sure, different than sure. a chain, but it, I, as far as roles that could be, 
kind of define for him, it seems like he would have to almost really, really break break the mold to to have for yeah. sure to be Darren Sproles. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I I think you know guys like him and Vaughn are, are kind of big outliers, right? Mm-hmm. But the they're talented kids, so I mean you're betting on them really in a sense proving that talent and continuing to kind of climb their way up depth charts. Um, guys like Raheem Moses, like you want guys like that in the field for a certain yeah. amount of plays a game, right? These aren't going to be your guys who touch the ball 20 times a game, but it's important because these are guys that can impact the game on any single touch. So you right. want those guys on the field, but do you want them in the field in terms of volume or do you want them in the field, you know, from an efficiency standpoint, probably from an efficiency standpoint, um, but yeah, it's interesting because a guy like Tony Pollard, you mentioned him, he was a, primarily a receiver coming out of college, right. Right? right? So there, there's definitely a learning curve in him being a more, you know, natural running back. Yeah, A chain doesn't shouldn't need that uh, leash to 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 relearn a position. Gainwell kind of similarly. It, again, I think it just comes down to fit of where they go and and how how they get schemed for both Deuce Vaughn. And probably a chain, you know, Spears may be a little bigger and maybe a little less um, worrisome about the height weight sure. kind of deal. Um, so, you know, it's always it, th- those guys are probably for me going to be pushed down into that that mid second second round just because of you know not because I don't like them just because of I'm I'm scared of the of the role that they will be consistently received in the NFL regardless of draft capital really right I think. Um, yeah, I agree. I think, you know, we talk about Spears versus some of those guys. I think Spears is probably the, at this point, the safer bet. Spears goes day t- Spears goes day two. You move him above Vaughn and a chain and he's, or is he already there for you? Um, in terms of like, in terms of film. Yeah. I think right now he's my RB four, RB three on mm-hmm. RB four on film. Um, yeah, I think he's really damn good. I just think and he's a good player. You move, you move him above tank Evans and, and uh, Tucker, if he gets, Similar, same, similar, or you know, day two to anywhere in the second or third round. Do you move them That's above those guys? Interesting. If if they all get similar capital, it's going to depend on landing spot, right? Yeah. What is the team they're going to do well? Who's currently there? And also, this free agency class is super Sh- deep for running sure. backs. Sure. So it's like, hey, did a team just sign, you know, a guy like David Montgomery, let's say, right? Yeah, Josh Jacobs. Guy, Sanders. Yeah, exactly. Right. Miles Sanders, Jacobs, Montgomery, you, you, Devin Singletary, even like you have these guys, and don't forget about like Saquon Barkley. Like you have these guys that are like, you know, Guys like Montgomery, you want in the field because he's going to protect the passer, right? He's a right. good pass catcher too, right? Is he an efficient runner? No, doesn't need him to be. So that's kind of the interesting part of this is there's this giant good free agency class coming in with a very good crop of new running back talent. Hmm. So it might be, you know, capitals, capitals can be really important, but fit is this is the most important in terms of schematic fit and who's on the roster right now. Yeah. Because I, I don't care if, you know, if let's say, let's say a guy like Bigsby or Evan are drafted in the second round to a team that has, you know, let's say, let's say Pacheco, David Montgomery for some reason, and then Zach Evans or something. Mm-hmm. And Clyde Edwards Alaire. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's tough. Like, it's yeah. like, how are you going to do that? You know, how, how are you going to justify taking that guy in, you know, the first two, three years of his, you know, and being in the league? Like, how many touches is he going to get? Because right. the room is so crowded. So if you're splitting touches between three good players, it's tough to justify. Right. I um, mean, the Eagles have been that way all season. It's hard to it's yeah. hard to say, you know, Miles was good for a stretch and Gainwell's good and, and Boston Scott's been good. So, you know, it's it's again going yeah. into the, the fit of and how they use yeah, their, their running so backs and the rotations and definitely, definitely. Yeah, this is probably the most interesting year in my opinion. Um, in terms of looking at the running back landscape, because it's going to change a lot after the draft. It's, you know, after Bajan and Jameer, it's like, oh, where are these guys going? It really matters. <laughs> yeah. 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 They all, they all seem to have um, some similar and some very different skill sets. And some are, you know, they kind of all have, after all, after those two guys, and maybe some people will throw Gibbs in there, there's just a yeah, but with just about, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all good, which is funny. Like they're right. all good in different ways, but they all right. have really, really different red flags and questions you have on them. So it's a fun class to evaluate because, you know, there's certain 
I don't know. Certain NFL teams might be enamored with some guys. It seems like Charbonnet has got to be the seems like the safest out of the other after you get out. Oh, for sure. For sure. I th- I th- like just, I, I think realistically from a size three down skill set. Yeah, man. It's, it's, he's basically hopefully Joe, Joe Mixon without the off the field stuff. In my <laughs> yeah. opinion, that's kind of what he is. Yeah. Right. Not overly dynamic, but can really help a team as a runner, as a receiver. And also, I think he's better in pass protection than Mixon is. That's one of the, the downsides of Joe Mixon is <sighs> it doesn't doesn't have the feel for space as a pass protector, right? That's why they bring in Samaj P. Right. Um, but yeah, I think Charbonnet is very much like a guy like Joe Mixon um, will be on the field for probably three downs, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool, man. Well, I'm gonna let you get out of here so we can watch the senior bowl. Um, appreciate you hopping on. Appreciate you talking. We'll hopefully have you again back on maybe after we get a landing spots and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff and, and be able to talk about how you view those fits for sure um, to kind of follow up this, this uh, little interview kind of uh, chat we had here. Yeah, for sure, man. Thank you again for having me on. I, you know, this has become an annual event for us. So um yeah. super stoked to continue this. But um, but yeah, um anytime you want me on back and um back after the NFL draft, you let me know. Yeah. Well, well tell give give everybody a uh a, a Twitter and a and a YouTube and a and a website plug one more time for you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um you can find me on Twitter um at Angelo underscore fantasy. Um website angeloanalysis.com um pretty simple to find all my work on there and then on youtube you can just type in angelo um angelo underscore fantasy i think it's on youtube yeah and then got, got a couple youtube series i did last year um testing those out so hopefully we'll be dropping some more content on, on youtube um probably closer to nfl draft or after yeah all right, man. Again, much appreciated. Always a great insight and uh, looking forward to many more. So anytime, man. All right. Take care. Have a good one. All right. Peace.